Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today's topic is Kepler's laws for planetary motion. The objectives are know Kepler's three laws that describe the motions of planets, understand the total energy and angular momentum are conserved in a planetary motion, be able to apply Kepler's laws to solve problems. Kepler's first law states that each planet moves in an elliptical orbit. So let's take a look. This is the elliptical orbit, and one focus is the sun, the other one has nothing. And this is the elliptical. How do we know? Because sp plus s prime p is constant for each point in its path. That's how we know the path is elliptical. There's two things we need to know. Major axis is the longest dimension, and the major axis is just half of that. So the Simon major axis is important because this is quantity we need for calculation. The other thing is the distance of each focus from the center of ellipse. This part is called Ea, where in this E, or E times A, this E is eccentricity. So when it's a circle, all these three points coincide with the center. That means you know the whole thing is a circle. So in that case, E equals to zero. So if E equals to zero, the ellipse is a circle. That's a special case for uniform circular motion. Earth, Earth's path is very close to a circle. E equals to 0 0.017. And the Venus path is even more close to a circle because E for the Venus is 0 0.007. The two points are important. One is perihelion, that's the point very close to the sun. The other one is aphelion, that's a point that's on the curve furthest from the sun. Kepler's second law says a line connecting the sun to a given planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time. So the line connected from the sun to the planet is this this line. This line sweeps out the equal areas in equal time. Let's take a look at C. These two areas are the same because they have the same time. That means when it's at a fillion, it speed has to be bigger because this arc is longer than when it's at a fillion, the arc is shorter. We can explain that using conservation of energy. Since gravity is the only force acting on the planet, total mechanical total mechanical energy has to be conserved. That means since it's closer to the sun over here, the potential energy has to be less. So the kinetic energy has to be more. That's why it has to be faster than at uh, point one here. The other thing that's conserved is angular momentum. Angular momentum is conserved because uh, the torque produced by gravity around the sun is zero. That's the force is passing through rotational axis does not produce any torque. Since L uh, is conserved, so L at 1 equals L at 2. L, angular momentum, equals I omega. I for point mass is mR squared, and omega equals V over R. We can simplify this expression. Get this, R1 times V1 equals R2 times V2. Basically, this is the equation for conservation of angular momentum for any uh, planet motion or satellite motion. The third law states that relationship between period and the Simon major axis. This relationship is very similar to the uniform circular motion, how period is related to the radius of the circle. So T basically is directly proportional to the Simon major axis to the power of 3 over 2. So in this equation, ms is the mass of the sun, a is the Simon major axis. Pay attention, the eccentricity uh, is not in this equation because it does not matter. Uh, asteroid in an elongated elliptical orbit with Simon major axis will have the same orbital period as a planet in a circular orbit of radius a. So the key difference is that asteroid moves at different speed at different points in its elliptical orbit. When it's further from the sun, it's slower. When it's closer to the sun, it's faster where the planet's speed is constant around its circular orbit. But both uh, takes the same amount of time to go one round. 
Example 7.7, .7, orbital speed. The question is, at which point the perihelion or aphelion in an elliptical orbit does planet have greatest speed? We just talked about it, right? It's perihelion. This is because of the second law, R capitalist second law, or we can use a conservation of energy to explain that. 7.8, Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law relates the period with um, the semi-major axis. So an asteroid pilot has an orbital speed of 4.62 years. Remember in your calculations, so the period has to be in seconds. So we have to convert years into seconds. In an orbital uh, eccentricity point, Two three three find the semi major axis of its orbit. So we know uh, we can use the third law because uh, in third law eccentricity is not part of third law. So this is not useful information. Simply using the third law to figure out what a is. So first you square both sides, then you figure out a cubed. Find finally you find find a substitute your numbers. Make sure you have t change into seconds first. And then your A is 4.15 times 10 to the 11 meter. Next example, uh, Common Halley moves in an elongated elliptical orbit around the sun. At a perihelion, the comet is 8.75 times 10 to the 7 kilometers from the sun. So we know this distance. And at a aphelion, it is 5.26 times 10 to the 9 kilometers from the sun. We also know this distance. The question is, what is the sun major? If we know both distances, we can find the whole length. Sun major is just half of that. Once we find a sun major, we can use the Kepler's third law to find a period. That's a sun major, and using this equation to find a period, you will find in seconds, but it's such a large number, so you can change that to years to make it more manageable. Planetary motion and the center of mass. Since gravity is the action-reaction force, both planet and sun orbits around their center of mass. The sun is not stationary because the sun's mass, however, is so much bigger. It's about 750 times total mass of all the planets combined. As a matter of fact, the center of the mass of the sun is still resides within the sun. It's very close to the center of the sun itself. But however, it is not a center, so the sun does move around its center. The sun is not stationary. Just like this planet and star system, both are moving toward, uh, around the center of mass. And if this is um, two objects, the planet and star are always on the opposite side of the center of mass. Test your understanding 7.5. The orbit of common X has a semi major axis that is four times larger than the semi major axis of comet Y. What is the ratio of orbital period of X to the orbital period of Y? We know orbital period is uh, directly proportional to the semi-major axis to the power of 3 over 2. So since x is 4 times of y, so the 4 to the power of 3 over 2 is just 8. So the, the ratio equals to 8. So what's the takeaway? So in this lesson, we learned three laws. Okay, that describes the motion of planets. The fir Kepler's first law says the uh, path has to be elliptical. The second law says it sweeps the equal area. The line from the uh, sun to the planet sweeps out equal area in the same time. And the third law tells us the relationship between period and the length of the semi major axis. We need to understand the total energy and angular momentum of these planetary motions are constant. They are conserved. And that is because gravity is conservative force and there's no torque. And basically, we just apply Kepler's laws to solve problems. Let's consider the following two examples. The moon of mass m orbits planet of mass 49m. So m orbit 49, I mean elliptical orbit as shown. When the moon is at point A, its 
Its distance from the center of the planet is r a, and its speed is v naught. When the moon is at point b, its speed is phi v naught. When the moon is at point a, the distance from the moon to the center of the mass of the planet is how much? So this is really to find the center of mass. This is a review question. Center of the mass is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2. Since this is asking from point A, so we can set this to be 0. m1 times 0 was m2, 49. 49 times Ra divided by the two added together, which is 50m. So the answer is just 49 over 50 times Ra. Next question, which is the same. Now the question is, when the moon is at B, the distance from the moon to the center of the planet is what? What is Rb equals to? If at B, the speed is five times of at A. We know during this motion, the angular momentum is conserved. So we can use that. Angular momentum is conserved. It means Ra times Va equals Rb times Vb. We plug the um, velocity for Ra and Rb. That's how we can find I mean, uh, VA and VB, that's how we can find RB, which is one-fifth of RA. And that's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.